Hey there class, it's good to be with you today. Uh, we are in social studies class right now and we're in chapter 12 and today is our last lesson in chapter 12 called Effects of the War. But before, before we get there, I'd like to read a devotional for today called Love as High as the Heavens. I will sing your praises among the nations for your unfailing love is as high as the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Psalm 57 verse 9 and 10. My unfailing love is as high as the heavens. My faithfulness reaches to the clouds. You can feel so wonderfully safe and secure in my love because it has no limits and no end. My faithfulness always has no limits and no end. Worship me as you think about these amazing gifts. The more you praise me, the more you can reflect my glory to other people, just as a mirror reflects the sunlight. This is how the Holy Spirit works. He changes you to be more like me. This change brings more and more glory to me. As you come closer to me through worship, I can change you in great and wonderful ways. I make you ready to share me with others. My love is not only higher than the heavens, but it also fills the earth. Keep looking up to me, my dear one. See me smiling down to you, my endless love falls upon you all the time, like heavenly snowflakes that melt softly on your face. No matter how bad the situation seems, my love will get you through it. And someday, my love will lift you all the way up to heaven. I am waiting for the day when I will take you home to live with me forever. May that devotional um, be in our thoughts today, um, that no matter how bad the situation gets, God is there for us. His faithfulness will carry us through, and he will be with us. Um, so today we have um, the effects of the war. So World War II is what we're talking about. Um, these two pictures you see here are of Anne Frank, who was a young girl uh, when the uh, Nazis started taking over Europe. Um, her and her family uh, fled Germany. She was actually born in Frankfurt. Um, so they fled Germany uh, to a city called Amsterdam in the Netherlands, uh, where they hid behind a bookcase um, that had several rooms behind it um, for uh, a few years uh, before they were finally found and uh, put in uh, concentration camps. And her and her sister um, actually uh, passed away um, in 1944. Uh, from typhus, a disease. A uh, pretty tragic case, um, but um, she wrote a diary, and um, hopefully if you get a chance to read um, her writing, uh, you should, uh, because it is an amazing writing. Um, so I certainly recommend that you, you read it. Um, so Kind of what we want to do today is we want to identify the changes that occurred in countries after World War II. Uh, we want to examine the creation of the United Nations and the relationship of the United States to other countries in the fight against something we call communism. So last lesson we left off with Germany and Japan uh, surrendering uh, to the Allied powers, uh, putting it into World War II. And we look primarily at the military side of World War II. What we want to look at today is really the social side, social impacts um, that the war had. Um, so the Holocaust. Um, uh, in World War II uh, was the deadliest war in history. Um, 20 million soldiers died, and I'm talking on all sides, right? To 20 million total soldiers died, 30 million civilians, um, so 50 million people perished total um, during World War II. So it was only when the war was over um, did the world uncover what Hitler and the Nazis had done. Uh, they put millions of people in concentration camps. So a concentration camp is a place where large numbers of people, especially political prisoners or members of persecuted minorities, are deliberately imprisoned in a relatively small area with inadequate facilities, sometimes to provide forced labor or to await mass execution. 
So the largest group of victims were the Jews, uh, more than six million of them. Um, Hitler blamed them for Germany's problems. Uh, this was genocide. Uh, genocide is a planned attempt to kill an entire people and is referred to as the Holocaust. Uh, the Nazi leaders um, were captured at the end of the war and they were tried uh, and convicted in the German city of Nuremberg. Uh, you might have heard of the Nuremberg trials. That's where they were convicted, tried and convicted. Um, so plans for peace uh, has begun um, even before the war was formally over. Um, the idea was to uh, begin um, an organization of nations to help solve problems. Um, so the United Nations was formed and is in New York City. Uh, here on the left-hand side, you can see the United Nations building in New York City. And on the right-hand side, you see the official emblem of the United Nations. Um, so the Cold War. Um, the United States and the Soviet Union were allies in World War II, uh, but were very different nations politically and economically. Um, the Soviet Union adopted something we call communism, a system in which the government owns all industries and property. Um, people there had uh, very few rights and freedoms. So the Soviet Union, uh, also known as USSR, which stands for the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, um, they set up a government, communist governments in countries in Eastern Europe. Uh, the free world, which means the countries against communism, uh, they saw this as a threat. So what happened from that was that a cold, a cold war began. Uh, so this is when the two nations, uh, what we call as Russia now, then the USSR or the Soviet Union uh, and the United States, they began a cold war. They fought politically against one another um, from this time in the mid forties um, up through 1991, which is when the Soviet Union was dissolved. And then it became at that time, Russia. So communism, um, this idea where um, a system in which the government owns all industries and property, this is actually a biblical principle. Uh, when we see in Acts 2 that all the brothers and sisters, they met together, no one had any needs. Um, they sold properties um, to give to those who had less, and so everyone had uh, what they needed. The problem is, uh, with this type of communism, God is taken out of that idea and when god is taken out of that idea it really falls apart because um, god is principal in terms of communism which we see in acts and the beginning of the church but when you take him out um, it just doesn't work um, so this is a picture of three men um, you probably recognize the two on the left uh, winston churchill the prime minister of great britain uh, the one in the middle, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, President of the United States, and Joseph Stalin on the right. So this is a picture that was taken at a meeting they had uh, called the Yalta Conference. This was in February 1945. And this conference was to discuss post-war peace, um, including the re reorganization of Germany uh, and Europe. Um, so what I'd like to do is to leave you um, with a quote uh, from FDR, Franklin Roosevelt, President of the United States. And it's one of the most famous quotes uh, from this time period, if not the most famous uh, from this time. And he said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Um, now, FDR, he said this at his first inauguration uh, in 1933, uh, when the U.S. was facing enormous economic hardships. Um, but it proved to fit uh, very well into the context of the evil forces that wanted to control the world um, in World War II. But at a really deeper level, um, we as Christians, uh, we know that Christ is on our side, and we truly have nothing to fear. 
Jesus said, do not fear, for I am with you. Um, think about the first verse of Psalm 23. The Lord's my shepherd, and he gives me all that I need. So we're in some hard times right now with COVID-19 and social distancing and sheltering at home. Uh, we don't have life the way we normally had it before. Um, but uh, in these times, uh, we have confidence that God will be with us, and he is with us, and he strengthens us. He never promises that everything will be easy, but only that he will remain faithful and will never stop loving us. All right, uh, so that is our end of chapter 12. It was good to be with you today, and uh, we will see you next time. Bye.